Hey guys, I'm here with Totoro this morning, getting ready, fueling up with the caffeine, starting to feel human. Um, today I'm going to do what in my mind I have been kind of thinking as um, a viewer requested try and review video. Um, you all seem to really enjoy my Stretch a Liquid Gold video in which I reviewed that moisturizer you all had asked me, asked me about. Um, and so lately I've been trying out another moisturizer that I'm going to review for you guys today based on your recommendations and enthusiasm. This is the Pharmaceris Multi, Multi Lipid Nourishing Face Cream by the, you know, the brand Pharmaceris. Um, and this is a product that is available in Europe and has been for quite some time. I got many questions asking to review this stemming out of my review of a lot of the Superdrug um, moisturizers and, and the um, Simply Pure line that I really enjoy so much that is available in the UK. So a lot of my European viewers asked me if I could review uh, this Pharmaceris moisturizer and weigh in. Um, you can purchase this in the United States now. and. Um, uh, Lovely Skin, the site Lovely Skin is an authorized distributor of Pharmaceris, but they no longer carry this particular multi-lipid nourishing face cream that you guys had asked me to review. So I ended up tracking it down on Amazon, and I know everybody's always apprehensive to purchase uh, skincare products on Amazon, but this came, you know, Amazon Prime very expeditiously. It was sealed in the package. I had no problems with it. Um, I got it a few weeks ago and I have since been using it nightly on my face um, in place of my CeraVe moisturizing cream just to try it out. This is a um, fragrance free moisturizer that has a lot of good ingredients in it which I'll talk about and some potentially problematic ingredients which I will of course point out. <clears throat> but um, you all had wanted me to review this for you guys. Um, I'm assuming you're aware of the price. That would be my one reservation with this. I paid $30 for this moisturizer, which is pretty expensive. I'm not sure what the going rate for this is in Europe. Maybe it's more affordable. Oftentimes that's the case with European skincare products. They're actually very affordable in Europe, but when they make it to the United States, they get, get a little bit more pricey. So maybe it is more affordable to you all, but I found this, this a little bit pricey at $30. Um, so I'm assuming you're aware of that price <clears throat> when you asked me to review it. But I have been using it for several weeks now at nighttime and I have really been enjoying it. It is a fragrance free ceramide containing moisturizer that also has a variety of moisturizing oils in it. It has avocado oil which can be helpful in a moisturizer. It also has um, a variety of um, alpha glucans, which are humectants. It has a few peptides in it as well. It has um, palmitoyl oligopeptide. If you'll recall back to my peptides and skincare video, peptides and skincare are largely helpful kind of as humectants and in binding water. They don't really they don't really alter or transform the skin, but as humectants and in binding the uh, binding up water and keeping the skin hydrated, they can improve the um, the appearance of skin, skin texture, plumpness, hydration, firmness, and so it, it, um, moisturizers that contain peptides, you know that explains the benefit that you might see in them. This contains that, um, some of those, and it also contains some triglycerides, which are an important part of the skin barrier, triglycerides and ceramides. So it's formulated to be um, a barrier repair cream for the face. Very, very nice, very gentle. Goes on really well. Um, I'll just show you guys. It's pretty lightweight. It's not heavy. It's not greasy. I was concerned it might be greasy, but it's not at all. Um, I'm just going to put it on my bare face here for you guys, but it goes goes into the skin really, really nicely. You can put it around your eyes, no problem, and um, it blends into the skin pretty quickly, dries pretty quickly, and for those of you who put on a moisturizer at nighttime and then you maybe go out in the evening um, and wear makeup on top of that, I think that makeup would go on okay over this moisturizer and then you would be good to go. Um, so it's really nice. Let's make sure I got it blended in. But you can see, you can see after I've applied it, my skin looks looks a little firmer, right? A little firmer, <laughs> um, a little more hydrated. A lot of that has to do with scattering of light um, properties and and just really just really plumping up those surface surface skin cells that are a little dry. 
that's an effect that you can see largely with any any moisturizer however I don't know that it's necessarily it's not necessarily unique to this um, I've talked about it at length in my how to moisturize the face videos and moisturizing ingredients videos but this certainly you know hydrates the skin but is is simultaneously lightweight so I think people who who have oily shiny greasy skin or you live in a humid environment and you're combating um, you're combating that kind of shine. <clears throat> I think that this would be a, a, a moisturizer you would enjoy and not be problematic for you. The other nice thing about this product is that it does not have any of the preservatives that are common causes in cosmetic products for contact allergy like um, butyl carbamates or you know rarely parabens can be problematic. This is free of that. So that's great. Um, if you're allergic to any sort of preservative you would be okay with this. This product does, however, contain um, alkyl glucosides, which I mentioned in my review of the Drunk Elephant <laughs> uh, sunscreen. You guys seem to enjoy that one. That was another uh, try and review request video that you guys had asked for and you seem to enjoy. But anyways, this has alkyl glucosides in them. And if you missed that video, alkyl glucosides are not a bad ingredient. They're not anything to, to be terrified about. They are a gentle, gentle surfactant that is in a lot of both moisturizers and sunscreens and is becoming increasingly more prevalent in skincare products. And it is basically a gentle surfactant that is added is, you know, far, far easier on the skin barrier than um, say SLS, for example. So it has, it has largely replaced that in a lot of, in a lot of products like sunscreens and facial moisturizers. As it has increased in prevalence, one of the things that we're seeing is a, and it's, is, a, is an uptick in the incidence of allergic contact dermatitis to alkyl glucosides. So they are, they are potential allergens that you should be aware of. Again, not bad ingredients, helpful in, in skincare products, but if you find that certain products irritate your skin, pay attention to the presence of alkyl glucosides because that could be a potential allergen for you. Um, but it's never been a problem for me so far and um, you know, uh, you can't avoid everything. The key one always to avoid is fragrance, which this does not have in it. So then the other ingredient that I was really, really apprehensive when I saw in here and is really, really popular in a lot of European products, a lot of European moisturizers is um, olive oil or olive oil derived um, oil based moisturizers. Um, I reviewed oils and skincare for you guys a while back and in that video you'll recall that I said olive oil is commonly used in a lot of moisturizers. It's commonly used in um, baby skincare, skincare and eczema and there's actually a small study showing that in reality olive oil can actually impair the skin barrier. It's high in oleic acid so I was really apprehensive how good of a moisturizer is this going to be given that it's got that olive oil component in it. Is that going to be problematic? I, f I found that this is great. It has not given me any problems personally with irritation, dryness. I've used it just fine with uh, tretinoin, no problem whatsoever. Very, very hydrating, very, very moisturizing. And I, I feel as though my skin is, is hydrated as though I were using my CeraVe moisturizing cream. So I think the, the olive oil in this at least does not seem to be problematic for me. Perhaps because they have balanced it out with so many other different humectants and um, you know linoleic rich um, plant derived oils that balance that out. Um, but I do suspect that could be a problematic ingredient for some of you. There are three things about this I, I guess that I would say give me pause. A, the price. It's more than I'm willing to spend on, a, on an ongoing basis for a for my moisturizer, you know, I have Cera CeraVe, which is far more affordable. B, the um, presence of the alkyl glucosides could be problematic for some of you. And C, the presence of olive oil. Those are the three e, e, e reservations with this one in my mind. This moisturizer also has an ingredient in it called pyroctone olamine, which is present in um, several skincare products in, in Europe that target seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff. It can inhibit some of the uh, growth of the yeast that lives on everyone's skin that drives these skin conditions, drives seborrheic dermatitis, those scaly greasy patches around the nose, forehead, sometimes eyebrows um, around the mouth, as well as drives dandruff. So it is, it is frequently present in a lot of anti-dandruff, anti-seborrhea products in, in Europe. 
Uh, whereas here in the United States, most of our products in the, that line contain the ingredient zinc pyrithium. Um, so I think this product actually might be okay. You know, I was thinking, would this be a helpful product for people with seborrheic dermatitis? I'm on the fence about it simply because of the presence of all of those oils in here. Oils can can kind of be problematic for people with seborrheic dermatitis. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure that this is gonna work very well. Um, this may be helpful, however, for those of you out there who have uh, what you describe as fungal acne. Uh, not very common, but a lot of you have received a diagnosis of fungal acne on the face or um, acne-like acne rashes related to um, malassezium or pterosporum yeast that live on our skin. And so I think this would be a, a reasonable moisture to consider because it has that ingredient in it um, and can reduce the amount of, of that little yeast on the skin that contributes to that process. Um, but overall, personally, I, I did really enjoy this moisturizer. I'm, um, you know, probably about a third of the way through it just after a few weeks of using it. So it is pretty pricey, but I thought it, I think it's very nice and I can understand why you guys enjoyed it so much and wanted me to try it and give you my thoughts on it. For me personally, it's not going to replace my CeraVe. As I said, that's a more affordable option to me, fewer ingredients. Um, but I do realize and appreciate that that is not available to you guys in Europe. And so that's why I was motivated by your, by your uh, request to review this one. So overall, it's good. I don't mind it. And I found that the Amazon um, source was reliable for those of you in the United States who might want to check it out. Um, and so I, I, don't, I don't think it's problematic getting it there either. I did notice, however, in looking at the site, once you guys pointed the brand out to me, they have a lot of really promising looking skincare products. So comment below if you use this line, um, if you use this brand. They have, I noticed on Lovely Skin, they have uh, a face clean, like a cleansing lotion that really looked promising and reasonably affordable. I think it was like 20 bucks, which isn't too, too terrible. So comment below and if there are other products from Pharmaceras that you guys are using and loving. Um, thank you so much for making me aware of this one um, and this brand. Uh, so I hope this review was, was what you guys had in mind. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.